was in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Before we begin Holy Mass, let us offer a prayer up unto God. Let us offer an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. To God who is joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God, and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now let us turn unto the altar of God, and make an examination of our conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God, I will now offer the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my dear brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with this authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove away nations and planted it. You cleared the ground, it took root and filled the land. It sent out bows as far as the sea, shoots as far as the ricer. Why have you broken down the walls so that all who pass by pluck its fruit? Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth 
Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father of all the nations on earth, you chose the people of Israel to be your very own. May we who share in your new covenant never cease to thank you for our Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the 27th Sunday in the Ordinary, we take the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest of vines. Within it he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard than I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through the wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Turn again, Lord of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Attend to this vine, the shoot your right hand has planted. Lord of hosts, restore us. Let your face shine upon us, that we may be saved. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, 
if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worth a praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I had planted you a choice vine, a fully tested stock. How could you turn out obnoxious to me, a spurious vine? Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to Saint Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, This is his heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, They will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper time. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in your eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. These words are taken from Psalm 80, verse 8. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today I would like to begin by reflecting on the reading found in today's Holy Mass. It is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In this reading, the prophet Isaiah is telling a story about a friend and his vineyard. Now the story begins that his friend had a piece of fertile ground in which he planted a vineyard. Now in preparation, he did everything he felt he needed to do. He cleared out the stones, and he turned over the ground, and then he chose the finest of vines, and even he built a hedge and a watchtower where he could view the growth and success of his vineyard. But after all this, he travels to another land, and he comes back and he ends up with wild grapes. And after this, he abandons his vineyard. He turns the ground over to be trampled, for this vineyard has become overgrown with thorns and briars. I have read that wild grapes have been referred to many as weeds, for they are so voracious that if unchecked, they will anchor themselves unto other plants and will overtake the growth of these plants and kill them. Once established, wild grapes are very difficult to get rid of. And as in today's story, the vineyard was lost. Now the story of Jerem of Isaiah telling this tale is the story of Israel. Isaiah tells us that the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. God chose Israel and its people from the beginning to be his vineyard, a place of beauty and growth. We are reminded by Jesus in the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John that God is the vine dresser. He is the one who is in charge. But as we have learned from history of the Old Testament, that even though God provided the children of Israel with all they needed, for them to be fruitful and successful, that in the end, there were so many times where they abandoned God and his directives and his commandments and created a vineyard that was no longer viable or good producing fruit. So what went wrong? I believe that the workers in the vineyard, who are referred to as tenants, chose to ignore God's directives and commandments. I believe that a vineyard is a symbol of God's providence given to nations and to peoples. If we choose not to tend what God has given to us, or do what he is saying to us during our lives, we fail to grow as a people and as a nation. Jesus expounds on the story of Isaiah by telling a parable about a vineyard. God sent forth prophets to bring people back unto him, but the people of the vineyard the tenants ignored, mistreated, abused, and even killed by those sent by God. Jesus was to foretell of his own death at the hands of the tenants of the vineyard. 
The teachings of Jesus were meant to bring man back unto God and his original covenant. We read in the Gospel of John, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world did not know him. He came unto his own and his own received him not. Jesus reminds his listeners of an Old Testament passage that is found in Psalm 118 verse 22. The stone that the builders rejected became the cornerstone. For Christian people, Jesus is the cornerstone of one's faith and one's salvation. But it must be taken and planted into fertile ground into one's heart and allowed to grow in the presence of the living God. I would like all of us to think of this world that God has created as a vineyard. Did not God place man in the very beginning of the garden and say to him, be fruitful and multiply the earth? Did not God after each day of creation say that it was good? When man turns away from God, he forgets about the providence and the beauty of God's vineyard. And in the end, that vineyard becomes neglected. Did not Jesus say what will happen? Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. Think of what we are doing in today's world. We have polluted the air, the water, and Mother Earth. We have, through our own ignorance, failed to see the need to tend God's vineyard. There are so many weeds in our world today that choke the life out of this most precious gift from God. Anger, hatred, division, violence, and killing. In Psalm 80, we hear the cry of David, who cried unto the Lord, as there are many who would cry unto the Lord this day. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted. They have burned it with fire, they have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your countenance. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you will make strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. O Lord, give us life. And we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. From Psalm 80, verses 14 through 18. So what is the answer? I don't know if there is one that will cause people to stop and listen. If Jesus was put to death 2,000 years ago for speaking the truth and pointing to the truth, then what is the salvation of our world and its people? Even those who have come after Jesus as his followers, his disciples, the saints and the martyrs who preached his good news. It has, has it really changed the evil that exists within many? The analogy in today's reading shows that the truth spoken by Isaiah and Jesus are eternal truths. My dear brothers and sisters, 
May the words found in the Gospel of John remind us of the source of our faith and sanctification. It is Jesus who speaks. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I've spoken unto you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. For in this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. I am the vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he proves it, so that it bears more fruit.
brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice on this day may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, accept these gifts of bread and wine which you have given us. Help us to be faithful stewards of your sacred mysteries. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The whole Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your whore hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, O powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Announcing the coming of your kingdom, Christ called his disciples and began his sacred and holy ministry. And empowered by your grace and your pure strength, may we faithfully fulfill the ministry that you have entrusted to our care. Therefore, we join with the angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heavens and earth are full of your glory, O Sanana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Sanana in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to get bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord, on this day, let us remember the sick, the suffering and the dying, the homeless and the hungry, the unemployed, those who have no one to care for them. Let us remember all those who are suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us remember all those children who are neglected and abused in our world as well as all victims of violence, both here and abroad. And for all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad. And finally, let us remember all here who are present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with an honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom, May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples, and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, in giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, so part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit.
forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it unto life everlasting. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give unto you. Do not look upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant it peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us a living faith, a fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come into my heart, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall we return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord with high praise while I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen.
I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the true vine and source of life. May we follow you and receive the power of your eternal sacrifice, that in sharing the cup we may share your glory and be perfected in your love. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifices are offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and all those for whom I have offered it through Christ our Lord, amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made. Yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Dear brothers and sisters, again I thank you for coming and sharing with us this day. We will conclude this morning with offering prayer for our church, for our loved ones, for those who are sick and suffering and dying. We will also offer prayers for the repose of the souls of our faithful departed. May God be with you and your loved ones. And may the angels of God watch over all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.